Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hut Culture. This episode is for Monday, September 23rd, 2013. My name is Monique Jones, owner of MoniqueBlog.net, a site that focuses on race and culture in entertainment. Uh, we have Ashley and Jasmine, uh, my sisters and co-hosts here with us today. And today we are going to be talking about Sleepy Hollow. Um, which is is a good lead-in to today since we're going to see the next episode of Sleepy Hollow. Uh, So first, let me give you a little bit of a background on the show in case you missed it. Um, And if you did, then I feel bad for you. (laughs) Uh, So the, the first episode, we see Ichabod Crane, the whole series is about Ichabod Crane, who was fighting against the British in the Revolutionary War, um, and he came upon Death, aka the head- Headless Horseman. Although he wasn't headless then, um, Ichabod chopped off his head, but then he was still coming for him, and then he got uh, Ichabod got mortally wounded. Uh, he gets a curse put on him so that the horseman can stay dead, and their blood mixed, and all this stuff. It Blood like brothers. Water. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I might be confusing everyone. So let me just read this. Um, Welcome to Sleepy Hollow, the thrilling new mystery adventure drama from co-creators slash executive producers Alex Kurtzman and Roberto Orsi, who are from Star Trek and Transformers franchises and Fringe. Um, in this modern day retelling of Washington Irving's classic Ichabod Crane, played by Tom Meeson of Salmon Salmon Fishing in the Yemen, is resurrected and pulled two and a half centuries through time to unravel a mystery that dates all the way back to the Founding Fathers. Um, by the way, we do see Washington in this episode, too, which is strange. Mm-hmm. Um, it was yeah. Revived alongside Ichabod is the infamous Headless Horseman, who is on a murderous rampage in present-day Sleepy Hollow, bound to the headless horseman by a blood spell cast on the battlefield of the American Revolution, Ichabod quickly realizes that stopping headless... That's his name? (laughs) (laughs) Headless! ...is just the beginning, as the resurrected writer is but the first of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, As his reinvented Ichabod finds himself in present-day Sleepy Hollow, he discovers a town and a world he no longer recognizes. All that is brutally familiar are headless, headless. <laughs> and Ichabod's <laughs> determination to annihilate this immortal being. It's a mission he must complete quickly as the horseman, as I shall call him. Headless! <laughs> <laughs> already has viciously slain Sheriff August Corbin, guest star Clancy Brown of Cowboys and Aliens and Carnival. Um, Gray served both as a mentor and father figure to Detective Abby Mills, Nicole Behery, Shame. She's from Shame? Wow, she's from Shame and American Violet. And 42. Yeah, and 42. A cop. A young cop whose own supernatural experiences help her form an unlikely bond with Ichabod. But Sleepy Hollow's head of police, Captain Frank Irving, Orlando Jones from the Chicago 8 and Drumline and from those 7-Up commercials in the <laughs> 90s, isn't buying any of this. In fact, the only person who is on Appy's side is Ichabod. His extensive first-hand knowledge of our secret American history, coupled with her superior profiling and modern threat assessment skills, will make them a formidable foe, more formidable duo as they work together to triumph over evil. The complex past of Ichabod and Abbey, from Ichabod's inclusion in the powerful and secretive Freemasons society and the ghostly appearance of his late wife Katrina, played by Katia Winter from Dexter, to Abby's childhood visions will help them solve the intricate puzzles of Sleepy Hollow in order to protect its future. As history repeats itself, the oddly linked pair will draw on the real stories and hallowed secrets this station was founded on in their quest to stop an increasingly vicious cycle of evil. Um, and we're not reading this part because it's boring. So, <clears throat> so there you have it. So uh, I'll let you two speak first, because if you've been to Monique blog, you already read my recap. So, uh, what do you think, Ashley? 
Well, um, first of all, I was really interested to watch this show because I have a very long, hard relationship with Sleepy Hollow, Legend of Sleepy Hollow, blah, 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 Igabod Crane, all that good stuff. Um, because as a kid, I watched the Disney version of Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I think I was like in fourth grade. Anyway, it creeped me out. And for whatever reason, that particular story has stuck with me since that day that I saw it. And it's haunted me sort of since that day. So I try to avoid stuff that has Sleepy Hollow in it. But since I'm an adult now, I'm trying to like not be afraid of things that aren't real. So anyway, that was interesting to me, first of all. Then I saw Nicole Bayhery, who I came to love after watching 42. If you have not seen the movie 42, you really need to watch it. Um, and it was also partially filmed in our hometown of Birmingham, Alabama. Yes. One of the few things we actually did right. Yes. So um, that's not to... So also, fun fact, we saw them like setting up the, yeah. uh, the roads or streets during my graduation at the end of it. We totally did. We yeah. totally did. It's amazing. It was an amazing sight. Yeah, it was awesome. And also highly frustrating since I tried out to be an extra and didn't make it. Anyway, uh, we're sorry for that. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was excited to see her on TV because I really liked her acting in 42. And I thought, yay, another new black actress who's not annoying. And I cannot go in, I, I'm not going to go into some of the people who I can't stand who are black actresses because that would take us the entire show. But she was a refreshing, real actress with actual skills. And she wasn't the same cookie cutter looking black person. And she brings what I found in 42 also, and in this role, like she brings like a, a, an odd sense of like realism to stuff. Yeah. Like it doesn't seem like she's acting. She's just being herself. Which is yeah, odd. Yeah, that's what I got. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's she's interesting. In a very game. natural. Right, very natural. Anyway, so I saw that. And I only saw this because Monique like reports on this stuff. I don't really watch TV for real, for real. Like I watch it in order to watch SVU and QVC and Food Network and the Create Channel because inside I'm a little old lady. So anyway, um, I was excited to see it. And so when we finally watched it, I was like, okay, is this gonna be like super scary or like really dumb or whatever? But it just came with the thrills from the beginning. It was amazing. First of all, we had red coats. That's always fun to have red coats. <laughs> Then we had decapitation and people coming up out of graves and more decapitation. Like the amount of decapitation in this show, this opening show, was so amazing. And I hate like the decapitation. The first five minutes we had we had two headless people or yes. three. Yeah, so yeah, two. yeah. We had no, we just had two. We yeah. had the actual headless horseman. And then we had yeah. Sheriff, what's his name? The sheriff. Yeah. sheriff. We, the only thing. And we had the the, about guy, the that. truck guy. The, what truck guy? The guy, they went to his house. Oh, yeah. Right, right. That's wow, so that, that's sweet. sad. Yeah. Why did he kill him? He wasn't important. Just I practicing, I guess. But maybe well, maybe he was trying to stop him. Well, mm -hmm. But, you know, in the, in the story, or at least in the Disney version, he would just take off people's heads. That's true. That's true. And in the Hey Arnold episode <laughs> with a uh, headless horseman, he would just kill people. Or as he's called, headless. Headless. <laughs> Headless. And if you want to know why we're saying it like that, I pretty much say everything in a Mordecai Rigby voice now because I love that. That wasn't really. That it sounds like you know, and they're it, like, that oh, like the Valley Girl. Yeah, I thought uh, that was like a ratted voice. Well, it's a mixture. Yeah. It's a lot of things. It, it started out Valley, but then I started kind of trying to Rigby Mordecai. Anyway. Headless. Headless. <laughs> anyway, getting back to the actual point of whatever I'm saying. <laughs> um, the show was thrilling to me, which is always great, but it wasn't too thrilling. Like, we tried to watch Hannibal, and that was too real. That was too much. Mm, it's a great show. But, but it was it's... like, the thrills were just, they became just, like, really scary, because people were dying in horrible ways in front of our eyes. It and was awful. I don't think we have the fortitude to watch that each week. I don't. I know I don't have the mental fortitude. <laughs> at all. But seeing he Headless, seeing him decapitate people on... Sleepy Hollow. I almost called the show Headless <laughs> on Sleepy Hollow. I could handle it. That would be the CW. Right, version. exactly, exactly. And the fact that there was going to be an interracial, like, 
I know they're not a couple yet, but you know they're going to be a couple. Yeah, um, I feel it. The fact that there were yeah, I felt it. people of two different races in the leading roles, I was so excited for that because you don't we don't have enough of that on TV at all. But I also do like the fact that we didn't get that kind of angle pushed at us immediately. Right. Like how a, a lesser right, show right. would do. Like they'd be like, oh, you know they're going to be together. Yeah, like she would have said, oh, he's hot. She hates him at first, which is amazing. That's great. And they only come together because they don't die at the end of the show. And she's probably kind of scared of him. Because who, who, uh, what else would you be if someone said, I come from the 1700s? Right. Right. Exactly. Anyway, Jasmine, what, what are your initial thoughts? Oh, man. Oh, man. Dude, okay. <laughs> so, okay, so I remember watching the, the Disney version. I don't remember ever finishing it. But I was freaked out by that. But then I, always, I, I forgot about the Headless Horseman for the rest of my life. So then when you guys told me to, like, watch the show, I was like, oh, man, I haven't heard of this guy since forever. And I thought and I thought, I thought it wasn't going to be that scary. But, oh, man. What? Did you <laughs> scream? Really, what? Did you scream as you were watching? Uh, no, I didn't scream. I didn't scream until the last part, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and we can spoil um, this if you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, but everyone <laughs> else has seen this episode, so I'm sure you're talking about when John Cho got his head flipped all the way back. <laughs> yeah. <no>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I screamed for like I don't no. know three or four minutes. <laughs> no, like I didn't even scream at that part. Um, like I think the most I did was just like whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did, I did the the morning right. like, <laughs> that one. <laughs> right. Um, but no, the last part that got me was when that weird like Slender Man oh, thing yeah. like broke the window. Yeah. That's what I actually screamed. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> that really scared that me. That reminded me of The Ring, which if you haven't yeah, seen The Ring, good. don't watch The Ring. Literally, do not watch it. It will ruin your life. Seriously. But yes, I right. screamed at that too. That was I was just like, and I was actually like very close to the television screen. I mean, uh, I was watching the, you know, the computer monitor in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So I was like sitting very close because I was just like, what is that thing? It looks like Slenderman. And, and so then I was like very close trying to see what kind of shape it was. Mm-hmm. And then it did that weird, like, ah, uh, that creepy thing. The scary like, rush. Yeah, and then, ah, yeah, that's ah, a legitimate ah. like horror movie technique. Seriously, and it's neat to even see that in a show, and like just how they made the. I think it's. I mean, I guess the devil is the same as the beast, right? The sign uh, of the beast. Beast. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, it would have to be right because. I don't know. Well, the the beast is the one controlling all this, isn't it? Yeah. So it has to be the devil because the devil's the one controlling the apocalypse. Okay. Well, anyway. Right. Yeah. I don't mm, know. I, I uh, maybe I should beef up on Revelations or something because <laughs> I don't actually. I'm not. I'm not 100 clear on that. But anyway. anyway, the the nefarious creature. Um, I like how right. his design is like it's kind of pan's labyrinthy in a way, but then it's it seems much much scarier. At the it's, same it's, time. Really, it's really slender manny. Yes, which. Slenderman is really scary, but it's also not scary. Yeah, the that's time. the thing. Yeah, yeah. But yes, I, I like they employed that technique by right. not really showing us what the thing is, and then making it like so creepy. That... And that we don't see his face. Right, right, right. Yeah. Even when he's in the shot. Mm-hmm. He's turning yeah, that was, away. Oh, that was ah! Oh, I didn't like that at all. <laughs> yeah, it's messed up. Seriously. Also, up. I thought it was I. Okay, you know when when uh, what's his name John Joe? Yeah, what's his okay, name I in the show? I thought call him Jack. I don't know. Does anybody uh, know his name in the show? It doesn't I, matter. It doesn't I think matter. it's Andy. Andy. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like Andy or Eddie or something. That's wow. Okay, moving on. You were saying. But um, that part when he was talking to the monster, I found it. You know, I found it strange that the monster also chose decapitation to kill him with. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. I well, thought, he, he he gave it a twist. I thought like I thought, right, right. But then at the same time, it was just like he still had his head. Mhm. 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 Mm-hmm. Um. But my favorite part was thinking like that that twist with like the the Catholic priest 
Yeah. Where you think, oh, he's evil because right. he has that weird look about him. Right. But then you realize, whoa, he came from the past too. Also, he was on our side. <laughs> <laughs> right, and he's a wit or what's a man witch? Warlock. Warlock. Witch man <laughs> is what he is. Yeah, which was crazy. And okay, that scene. Okay, while this scene was happening, I was talking to the TV because I don't know what is wrong with people in scary situations. Like they do everything wrong. This man came outside when he knew the headless headless was out looking for him. He came outside and then he just stands there looking at him, running into nowhere, yeah. into the darkest, most desolate in, corner of the cemetery. Yeah, he ran into Back the to cemetery. Built into a wall. Into a wall. <laughs> then, like he did this red and like weak sauce sorcery that he <laughs> knew wouldn't do anything. I was waiting for him to pull out a Bible and a cross or something yeah. and like use the power of God or something that would actually work. But no, he's just like, I'm just gonna do some like some little what is it, like strings or something? I don't even like know what the heck. Tape. Yeah, like chains. Yeah, like a chain is gonna stop the freaking devil thing. Like, also, also, I thought, also, I was underwhelmed both by the priest and headless because I thought like headless while he was chained was just gonna do like some cool like boomerang axe thing right. to cut oh, off yeah. his head. And I was just like, oh, that's gonna be awesome. But then he didn't do it, and that I was just like, him. okay. <laughs> but he just, doesn't he just like break it? <laughs> no, <laughs> like, he, no, he he comes up and then he chops it. That's the part where like you're in the position of the head. And then he chops uh, off the head. And then I liked that, off, though. I liked that we died. That was cool. Was yeah, that was cool. Me and uh, Monique were like, as soon as his head fell off, we were like, game over. <laughs> because you know. see the blood on the screen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> um, but that reminded me, uh, what did y'all think of when the Headless Horseman got all this artillery? Okay. Oh, yeah. When did he get that? <laughs> he picked it up from... Didn't he pick it up from somewhere? Or did like, it, was it after he went to that dude's house that he got it? It was when he got to his house. Did he pick up the stuff at his house, or he just bought it somewhere? Like, where is he getting it from? Not the 1700s, that's no. for sure. But he has, like, an assault rifle and all this junk? Or yeah, maybe... I was like, when the heck did he get all this stuff? And how does he know how to use it? Or did Was John Cho going back to his apartment, or was he... He was going back to his apartment. Okay, so that is his apartment. That's his apartment. Oh, okay. Well, then why does he have that stuff in his apartment? Because he's a gun enthusiast? I don't know. He's a deputy. He is a policeman. Yeah. Right. Uh, but he shouldn't have I mean, an assault rifle. Yeah, you don't need an assault rifle. Well, well, what if we operate under the assumption that John Cho was a devil helper in the beginning? Also, he's crazy. Did you see what after he uh, like locked up, uh, what was the name? Abby. Ashley? Amy? Abby. 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 In like the truck or whatever. And then he's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be <laughs> Yeah, that was creepy. That was oh really my gosh, creepy. I was just like, is this going to turn to, like, rape? What is exactly, happening? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what I was going to say is, it's like, what I thought when I saw that was, like, we already got, like, an inkling in the beginning that he, I'll, I'll say, cared for, you, know, you can't see my fingers doing the... Air quotes. Air quotes, but, like... Besties. Yeah, but, like, he seemed weird about it, like... Like, you know how when you're trying to, like, hide that you like somebody, mm-hmm, and then you mm-hmm. act all weird? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially when the person's about to do a choice, you're just like, just don't do it, okay? Right. Right. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> just don't do it. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, we see that in the beginning, when he's, like, telling her, uh, like, don't go after this guy, or whatever he says, or mm-hmm. leave this alone, or something. You just put him in jail. Right, 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 right. And then, like, when we see him, like, trying to do what the the devil wants him to do, then he's, like, weirdly, like, stroking her face and, and stuff. And that's yeah. what gives him the opportunity to bite his thumb almost all the way off. Dude, can you actually do that? Uh, if you have a strong enough jaw, and if you're in an adrenaline situation, like a life or death situation, you have enough right. adrenaline to do a lot of superhuman things. So okay. I think it would be possible. Okay. Especially with teeth like hers, like her dentist must have put in overtime work on her teeth. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah, she does have good teeth. Yeah. So. Also, 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 did that part remind you of Grimm? Because it reminded me of Grimm. The whole show like, reminds me of Grimm. Yeah, but it's just but better that, than Grimm. That scene especially, because I remember the last episode of Grimm we watched, 
like uh, some like Death Eater, not Death Eater. Wow, some uh, <laughs> some uh, like uh, uh, some people with the fight. Um, uh, oh, Grim um, Reaper. There you go. A Grim yeah. Reaper like cut off some dude's ear randomly. Oh. You know, do you remember that? No. Was I watching uh, it with you? Yeah, you were watching it with me. Oh. And then like the guy was talking, and then the. The, the sight dude cut off the guy's ear, oh, and then we were just like, ah! Oh, and then yeah. the guy was just screaming. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I, remember that. I don't know. That, that scene just reminded me of how random appendages go off. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, this show does remind me a lot of Grimm in general, mm-hmm. but I think it's more successful because we were talking about this after the show um, when we watched it. Um, it's more successful because unlike Grimm, it's not relying on cheap humor and a really like thin plot to carry it. I mean, there's still more shows to come, so maybe they will devolve. Hopefully not, but hopefully not. You know, they, they seem to be keeping it serious with just enough, just enough humor to satisfy the drones of Tumblr fans, <laughs> but not enough right, to make, right. <laughs> right, not enough to support any fan fiction pairings that it might is, come. It up. is Tumblr friendly. It's super Tumblr friendly. It is Tumblr friendly. I'm surprised I haven't seen anything on my dad. Oh, it's there. It's, I've already seen. Oh. People are already going ham, okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they are going ham. Oh, no. Did they have a name for the fandom yet? They're trying to develop one. Why does ah! everything need a name? Why can't you just... What happened to the good old days? Ah! You could just be a fan of something and not well, be in no, a kind of what club. The, the girl who drew the fan art that I posted on the Night Vale post... Uh, I'll just say about her DeviantArt name because I don't know if she wants me to give out her real name Empress Funk she's on DeviantArt she was on her Tumblr she was like why can't we just be Sleepy Hollow fans and yeah and not like Hollow stirs or Here's something Hollow <laughs> right and like some people were trying to say uh, oh, I can't remember um, something with Sleepy in it what they always trying to make like puns my favorite, my favorite. I don't know if Sleepy they actually fans. chose this one, Something. but like you, you remember Wunsler from uh, uh, Lorax movie? Yes. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait. Pe- okay, okay. The Lorax. Yes. The Lorax. The Wunsler. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. I just, I need you to understand my confusion. Why? Why is Tumblr even responding to the Lorax? That is a children's movie. A lot of people would see that. So. Yes, but I mean, it can be for adults too. But like, that's that's not even the kind of movie that you need to have a fandom for. Because what are you talking about? What are you? Who are you pairing? What are you doing? The oh. Onceler does not have romantic desires. It's the Onceler. Right. Somehow it just. I don't know how either. And it the became... one sluts. The one sluts. What? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> oh man, they had one for it. For Jack Frost too. Oh, what was oh, it? Oh yeah. Uh, oh, it was good. It was hilarious. <laughs> um, oh man. I remember you telling me about it, but I can't remember what they were called. It was something that had nothing to do with Jack Frost, right? Like, oh, it was <laughs> really good. Like, it was a really good pun. I don't know. All I can think of is the frostbite, which was not as good as what they came up with. Yeah, I, remember, I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember what they came Oh, up man, I, I hate myself now. No, it's it's actually good that you don't remember this, because I don't want to give them any glory. Right. But, yeah, I I already, I, like, watching the show, I was just like, okay, Tumblr, you're going to run with that. You're going to run with that. You're going to run with that. And they're certainly going to run with the dude with the ponytail, Ichabod, because he his whole, like, being is made for Tumblr people to devour. Right. Dude, I bet that scene with the Starbuckses. Oh, that's gonna be that's gold. Yeah, when he's something. saying that there's oh Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. I, a... I, 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 how do you purify Starbucks? Starbucks. Is... Is... <laughs> and there's Starbucks another scene is... coming up in this upcoming episode where like I guess Abby has him living in her house for right now. Oh no. And so she has to put up sticky notes about what everything is. And so there's already on Tumblr, you'll see, like, there's already um, gifts of all the sticky notes. I'm like, already envisioning a make, fan fiction. Yeah, like how to make I can coffee. See it. And there's, like, what, the main one is where he's in the shower and you see the sticky notes for turn right or whatever, like, you turn it for hot, 
water turn whatever for cold water and so he turns it and then he has like this this freak out when the water comes shooting out of the shower I smell the fan fiction see and I'm already I'm just going to share with you viewers the fan fiction that will be written and you're you're free to take this fandom people I'm not going to write this (laughs) and don't credit me do not credit me with it please take it for free but the story that I envision is going to be with them, like, okay, they go to Starbucks, they fight a little fight, and then with all the oh, sticky it's gonna notes... Oh, wait, it's going to be a fluff fic. Right. <laughs> what was that? A fluff fic? That's when it's just, like, about romance stuff and about nothing. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And then they come back to her house, and she's, like, showing him around. And, like, one night, um, somehow sticky notes end up getting put on body parts, and that's, that's well, I'm going to say, y'all run with it, yeah. fan people. Yeah, no, there's not written. a fluff fic anymore. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't I don't know what fluff fic means because I don't know what fluff fan fiction game. is. <laughs> <Fluff>. <laughs> I don't read it on purpose. Fluff is fluff is like imagine if you're dating someone and then like you're walking in the park and you just happen to like like you keep brushing hands with whoever you're dating yeah, and, and you're, then and you're, you're like thinking should I them. hold his hand? Or will he hold mine? And then after a wow. while, you just hold hands, and then... That's the end of the story? Yeah, that's it. That's fluff right there. That's a bathtub story. <laughs> Do you know the term? No. A bathtub story is when, uh, like, a story that the person, like, the main character is just in one place, and they never go anywhere, and they never talk to anyone. But everything they do is in their head. Like, if you were just in the bathtub for an hour, thinking. Um, right, that's, that's exactly story. right. Oh. That's what bluff is. You're yeah. just I'm everything. dropping real literary terms here. So if you guys don't know fan fiction, I'll translate for you. <laughs> well, well um, we're running a little long here. So very quickly, what rating do you give the show? Actually? So far, I would give it a 5 out of 5. Okay. But... Minus fan fiction abilities. What do you... I, would give it, I would give it a, a, a 5 out of 5 as well. Okay, same here. 5 out of 5. And hopefully, next episode will be a six out of five. <laughs> but, um. Wait, wait, when does this joke come on naturally? Because I watched the. It comes the, on. The... <laughs> naturally! It <laughs> blooms on Mondays. <laughs> yeah, it comes on Mondays. Okay. Um, I think it's 9, 8 central. Okay. Okay, yeah, for, <laughs> Fox, for people right? who don't know, I watched the, the. The, um. The encore. Yeah, the encore. Yeah, I guess it. I guess it'll be encoring on every Saturday. I guess we'll see. Friday, right? Friday. Sorry, Friday. Every Friday, I suppose. Check, cause I don't know for sure. And I'm gonna become a rapper, and I'll be headless, just like Two Chains. Headless. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, so that wraps it up for this episode of Pod Culture. You can check out Monique Blog at MoniqueBlog.net. You can certainly find these podcasts on the Hot Culture show page on Spreaker. Uh, you can also find Hot Culture on SoundCloud, on Tumblr, Twitter, website. All the links that are on the Spreaker show page, you can find it. Um, you can also send comments or questions about this show or any other shows any other episode i mean on oh, through uh, my gmail account which is listed on the show page um and i think that's about it you can also leave comments at the end of this blog post or on my facebook page so with that i hope you join us again next time for another episode of hot culture bye bye bye